The Lancashire town of Great Harwood is in a certain sense a town at the margins of British life. Located in the northwest of England, Great Harwood is not a place many people stumble upon by accident. Its fortunes rose and fell on the crest of the wave of the Industrial Revolution. Whatever the benefits or repercussions of Brexit turn out to be, these are the places that will either flush with blood or turn bitter blue before the effects work their way into the limbs and torso of the UK's towns and cities. Towns like Great Harwood, towns like Todd Morden, Strainair, Mould, Ilfracombe, and Swanage are as important as Knightsbridge, Camden, and Hackney. Great Harwood appears in one sense on the margins of British life, yet this makes it a bellwether for the selfsame reasons. As with the Industrial Revolution, the rise and fall of such towns speaks to the socio-economic fortunes of the country at large. Every place has an impact, however small. Every place leaves its imprint upon the history of the world. Everyone, welcome to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and you have just seen the work of John Harrison and his project Bellwether, and that is the project we're going to talk about today with the uh, with the eminent Ed Cashy and uh, Glenn Ruga is here as well. So I want to thank you all for joining us. This is going to be a good program. Ed Cashy is a renowned photojournalist, a filmmaker, a speaker, and an educator, and he has been making images and telling stories for 40 years. Ed's photography and filmmaking earned recognition as 2015's Multimedia Photographer of the Year. He's won awards from World Press Photo, ComArts, and American Photography as well. His images have been published and exhibited worldwide. He has 11 books to his name, including the most recent Abandoned Moments, A Love Letter to Photography. Ed Kashi, it is uh, fantastic to have you here on the Crit House. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. And Glenn, Glenn Ruga is the founder of the Social Documentary Network, SDN. We are partnering here with on the Crit House to show some documentary projects, and it's great to work with you. Uh, he uh, launched Zeke Magazine, the uh, magazine of global documentary in 2015. He is also a photographer and a graphic designer, and it's always good to have you here uh, joining us on the Crit House. Do you want to um, say a couple of words about what we're doing here today with, uh, with Ed and John? Sure. Uh, well, thank you so much, Jeff, for doing this and this introduction, and so great to be partnering with the Crit House on these documentary portfolio reviews. Really looking forward to today's review with uh, Ed and John. Uh, looking forward to discussing uh, this outstanding project. And before we get started, I just want to remind your viewers that Ed is one of the many internationally renowned instructors teaching with the SDN Education Program this fall. And he'll be teaching a class titled Developing a Personal Documentary Project starting later this fall. So your members can find more information about Ed's class and all of our other educational opportunities at the SDN website at www.socialdocumentary.net. And you can also find out more about all of SDN's programs supporting documentary photographers and our print and digital publication, Zeke Magazine, at the same link. So let me turn it back over to you, Jeff. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Uh, just really some some amazing um, amazing instructors you have on that list, including uh, Amber Bracken, who we spoke with recently, and Ed Kashi. It's uh, it's great to have you with us. Um, our project Thanks. today that we've referred to is by John Harrison Bellwether, and he is in the northwest of England. John has been making photographs for about thirty years. He has exhibited at numerous UK and international venues, and he has studied documentary photography at the University of South Wales Newport School, and he completed a practice-based PhD program just this year. John, um, welcome to the Crit House. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your project, Bellwether. Yeah, sure. It's great to be here. I uh, just want to give a thank you, uh, Jeff, to you and Glenn for helping set this up. And uh, thanks for the opportunity, Ed. I'm really looking forward to your feedback on the work. I'm sure it's going to be really helpful. And um, I listened to your, uh, your interview in the Candid Frame. Uh, only a week or two ago, and uh, so many things that connected your relationship to uh, photography. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to us discussing the work. Um, as you said, Jeff, I've been making photographs for around 30 years in different guises. It's moved from 
a professional career uh, to uh, an academic research sort of endeavor. Uh, and more lately, I would, I would argue, because my work doesn't really relate to photography in, 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 in much of a way at all, it's really become a, a very serious and very committed hobby. And um, I suppose when we came out of lockdown um, uh, for, for the UK, we were, we were, we'd were gone through this, this sort of uh, paradigm of, of Brexit. And like every other country in the world, we were coming and wrestling uh, from, the, from the issues of the pandemic. Uh, but we were also sort of um, through a lot of colliding issues as well, uh, moving into a cost of living crisis, which is really affecting us here in the UK at the moment, not least uh, because of the uh, rising energy prices. And I felt what I wanted to try to do, and I've always wanted to try and do this with my photography, is connect some perhaps regional, national, maybe even global issues to a very small space, to a very small town in this case, which is Great Harwood. Uh, and, the, and the surrounding towns, it's like they're actually known locally as the three towns of Great Harwood, Rishton, and Clayton and Moors. Um, and there are some outlying villages within that as well. So I'm trying to make a piece of work that uh, engages local people. We've got an exhibition coming up uh, in a few weeks uh, for a month or two, where we've invited lots of local people to come, come and give their views about the work. We want to help to sort of inform the direction of it. And what we're trying to do is to, is to sort of make the point that actually these smaller towns in the UK that are around 10,000 people in population, when you put all those together in the UK, you get this, this area, you know, bigger than the size of Greater London in terms of population. They're very, very important places, but they're often the areas where investment is very low, infrastructure is not necessarily of great quality. Um, and so we wanted to try and reflect that and uh, in, in this great time of change that we're going through in the UK. And um, I guess, well, hopefully that's a, that's a good enough uh, overview for you, Jeff, though. That is, that's a great overview. Thank you. Um, Ed, so now we've seen the video and we're looking at the images. What's your, what's your response to the project? What are your initial thoughts about what uh, John could do to take it up to the next level? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I love the idea that you're, you're creating something that you know, ostensibly is for just your community or a, or a community, you know, that there's, there's something quite beautiful about that. And, and there's, it's a way that, you know, it's an aspect of photography that, that I think, especially folks who are like determined to be, you know, famous professionals and go around the world and all that as photojournalists or documentarians, like sometimes we, they lose sight of, of how, how effective and impactful a locally produced project meant for a local audience can be. And so to me, this project, I mean, is, is, um, you know, epitomizes that um, in, in, you know, the most beautiful ways. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know. So you said you have an exhibition because one of the first thoughts in my head as I was looking at this is like, how do you plan to share this work? You know, who do you plan to share it with? And um, so you have an exhibition coming up that will be what in a local gallery it's, it's actually in the local library in great hold and it's going to be on for maybe a, a month or two and um uh -huh. I, I carry when i when i sort of uh, when i'm making photographs i always carry a link you know a card with my website on it and over the last few months we've been building up to the exhibitions so everybody that i've photographed even the people i haven't photographed that have been in and around when i've been making making photographs I've given my cards out and, you know, tried to say, look, this, you know, keep an eye on the library, there'll be an exhibition, I really love it if you could come down and help us to direct where the work's going. Uh, I, I wouldn't describe my work as, as a socially engaged practice, but I think I'd like it to be on the sort of, you know, one side of that. Um, so I really want to make sure that we can, we can get the work out to local people. And I suppose that was applying to be on the Crit House was, was perhaps a, in a similar vein of, not only wanting to listen to feedback on the work, but trying to push the work out to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by it's not socially engaged? What do you mean by that? Um, I think, I think you know, sort of maybe contemporary definitions of socially engaged perhaps indicate where the people you're photographing have a really direct control over how that image is not only produced and made uh, at the time of exposure, for example, but also how it's disseminated, how it's shared or how it's exhibited. It, the work perhaps doesn't sit on that side of the definition. It's perhaps a little looser in the sense that there is, I am having a dialogue with local people, but it tends to be at the time when I'm making photographs, they're very much aware of what I'm trying to do, their understanding of that. Um, I'm always amazed. I mean, it, it's, it, they're so generous, the people. I mean, it's probably eight out of 10 of the people that I ask 
if I can if I can take their portrait, they they agree to it. I don't I'm not the most charming of people, but I'm just always amazed by people's willingness to sort of uh, share their stories and and to have the the picture made by me. So the, the, this part of it that's around you know being socially engaged when you're there, uh, making conversations. It's not necessarily interviewing people either, but certainly having long discussions. Sometimes when I'm making a portrait of somebody, the discussions can last, you know, 15, 20 minutes, even up to half an hour. And people are very willing mm -hmm. to share their life stories and their opinions about things in terms of the themes of the project. I have to find a way of utilizing that because I've got lots of notes where I've, you know, written things down. And when I find, find a, a park bench somewhere, I'll sit down and make notes about the work. Um, so the exhibition is also part of that strategy of saying, well, okay, we, we, we've done this thing over the last 18 months. There's a body of photography and uh, there's some writing that goes along with that. A collaborator, uh, my friend uh, Robert, who's written, I think, a really beautiful piece of, of writing to go along with the photographs. We want to share that with the local people and say, well, okay, here's what we, we, we're finding. Here's what we're seeing. Uh, tell us how we might take it forward. Yeah. What what portion of, proportion of the people who have you photographed had you ever met before? Or are these all sort of strangers or new new friends to you? Yeah, they're all new. Every single one. Yeah. I mean, it's probably on, on, on my website, there's probably around 30 to 40 images. Maybe around 20 of those contain, you know, portraits. Uh, all new. Uh, I've made some great friends. You know, I go back and, uh, you know, give prints to people once I've, you know, photographed them and trying to really yeah. engage with the project. and. I mean, and that's always are the you... thing for me with photography is about, it's not, I mean, it's maybe a cliche to say it, but not always about the making of the photograph. It's, it's so much about the learning that you, you experience and uh, the connections you make. Um, that, that's really a big part By of it. By the way, I love this picture. Sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but I love this picture. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, there's the... a title for this one, which I think is Two Worlds Converged. I think I'm trying to make the point that the industrial revolution is kind of a, it's kind of indelible, no matter what people try to do it. It's sort of, yeah. Itself. yeah but sorry you were in the middle of making a point that i want you to finish no i think i just i think i just finished uh I, that, was, that was fine it was just just making the point that it's it's, it's a, quite a methodical approach and it's about learning about people's lives people's stories their experiences uh and making mm -hmm. connections and it is about making friends as well you know so yeah how far how is this from where you, you live john well it's very very close i mean the great tower itself is probably only three miles from where i am now it's very very close yeah and are you are you have you completed the photography or are you still photographing um i'm sort of mindful to draw on a quote that i once heard about photography which was i think it might have been daniel meadows maybe um who said something along the lines of when you make this kind of photography you should make it and then ignore it for 20 years you know um in the sense <laughs> that i think i'm seeing this very much as a long-term project I'd like to continue maybe for another two years and see how things develop uh, and then continue to okay. show the work in different ways and watch it evolve. I'm not, I'm not somebody who, who wants necessarily to confine uh, the language even of the photography, the visual sort of strategy, but rather allow it to develop as, as I learn uh, and as people open up to me and I get more access, um, maybe the visual strategy will even change. I suppose that's, that's part of what I was looking for feedback on today is around you know, the sequences of the work maybe, but also how do you develop that further and uh, how, do I, yeah. how do I get to reach a larger, larger audience too? Well, I'm so happy you used the word visual strategy and um, because I was just wanted to comment on that now, you know, going having gone through the, you know, cycled through these pictures a few times is that one thing that to me is like a blaring omission is there's no photographs of inside people's homes mm. there's no photographs inside period so that's something that if you are going or it sounds like not if as you continue to build on this body of work that is something certainly that i would like to see because mm. it it not only lends a, a greater intimacy to the work but it also shows how people are living you know i mean i feel that like i know when you said that this is not socially engaged i wasn't sure if you meant like you're not trying to make a sort of a statement about like a social statement, but, but, but um, you were, you were sort of using it in a different way, but, you know, like in so much of my work, I'm always trying to figure out how can I make images that tell a deeper story and, um, you know, maybe reveal things um, like socioeconomics or, or other kinds of issues. And on the one hand, what's so wonderful about this work is that it's not, 
laboring to try to do that, that it really is this sort of lovely overview, if you like, of this place, you know, in this time. And also what I really appreciate, you know, your sense of history and, you know, historical perspectives so that like that pavement picture with the cobblestones is in some ways a brilliant image. You know, it's so simple, but it's also quite lovely. Well, I think it's lovely visually or aesthetically, but yet it also kind of has these, the, it, it, it reveals these multiple layers of meaning. And so as you continue to work on this, I would urge you to look for more of these kinds of images, uh, tableaus, maybe, you know, by going into someone's home, maybe it might be an elderly person, not necessarily, you know, maybe their home holds some, some historical, not secrets per se, but, you know, as in like uh, mystery, but, but, you know, some um, evidence, some evidence of the historical past of this place, you know, and, and also it's always, I love these sort of, um, I don't know if it's longitudinal, but where you, you photograph someone or something in the moment, but you use it as a way to vector into the past. Mm -hmm. And, and that can be done either through the images or through the, the, the words that you record, you know, through interviews and so forth. And they don't have to be formal uptight interviews either. They can be conversational and you're just making notes or maybe you use your smartphone to record it. So it's less um, intrusive. You know, it feels to me there's something casual about this work, but I actually like that. You know, it's like you're sometimes there's certain kinds of work where you can feel the photographer is trying so damn hard and you can feel that. And in this work, it's feeling kind of effortless. And, um, you know, there's a certain sort of, I don't know if joyful quality is the right way, but there's this very light quality that I mean that in a positive way. So with all that said, I really, really love and appreciate what you've done so far. I really, really appreciate the whole context of this work, like the, the purpose of it, your motivation, and then how you envision, you know, using it. Um, and then we can talk about how to reach a broad audience. But what I would urge you unless you and I'd love to hear your response to this by the way this picture I'm not a big fan of sign pictures just I, that's just me um you know pictures of words it has to really really say something that's either ironic or funny or 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 super revealing I'm not sure I understand this last wash but anyway just just um that's no little foible or my own little idiosyncrasy. But, um, you know, in general, um, I would urge you to go a little deeper, um, get inside people's homes, get inside shops, you know, so forth and so on. Maybe are there any like abandoned factories, like this sort of physical remnants of the, whatever it is, the Victorian age, the industrial revolution, um, you know, that would also um, empower this work both visually and historically um so yeah that those are those are my sort of first comments oh last thing with the portraits or the pictures of people um some of them it feels like and i may be really off base here but it feels like you're kind of catching them in a mo like an in-between moment but you said you spent a lot of time with them right um yeah, sure. you know like in like if with with portraits, sometimes it feels like the people, the subjects are very settled, like, you know, they're settled, but then also able to project a kind of strength in their character or, or the way they're feeling in the moment. And then there are other pictures like this one. Well, first of all, he's an amazing face. The light's incredible. He has beautiful eyes. There's a lot of wonderful things. But like with his mouth open, it's that feeling of like an in-between moment that you captured. Sure. I'll shut up for now. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. I mean, that's great feedback to hear, Ed. I really appreciate that. And uh, in some ways, that's really great validation of, of w where I think the project is going and where I feel it's going as well. And it's great to hear that. It's sort of almost like a bit of an echo chamber in some ways to where I, where I want the work to go and what I need to do. I mean, your comment about moving the work inside 
uh, it, to me could be could be moving the work closer right so it, it's 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 not just about you know it's about me gaining more access i think and uh, i think that's absolutely right i think this has been the first point where i felt we we had something uh i had a portfolio of photographs that i could share with people that would make sense to them and i think the next point is to try and gain that access so i really appreciate you saying that i think that's that's absolutely spot on i would really love to love to hear uh, your perspectives on some of the individual pictures and the, the, this particular photograph which is you know I, I i really like it personally um and i'm glad that you can see the sort of potential in that kind of image as well so it's, it's a, you know again it's about looking for images that that have these these sort of uh, these different layers to them um and i think the point about the portraits is really interesting because i think what you're picking up on is is perhaps an evolution of the portraits that were taken quite early on and the portraits that have been taken more recently uh, as i've become feeling less of an outsider uh, and more on the inside and perhaps in myself feeling more comfortable and that sort of uh, slight anxiety perhaps is what it is is in the sense of, of I'm starting to feel more closer to the place and feel more comfortable with what I'm doing and that maybe that's just being reflected in the portrait so that's a really useful piece of feedback yeah oh and it's it's uncanny how that is when we photograph people that if we're uncomfortable or uncertain within ourselves it's very hard to make people feel comfortable and settled in front of our camera. You know, the other thing I wanted to say with a few other things. So how big of an immigrant community, I, I may be jumping, but I, this particular image, I, he looks to me like he might be Pakistani or, or, you know, whatever, but, and which isn't so important, but just it made me think about like, is there much of an immigrant community there now? Because that would be another fascinating and very important aspect of you know telling the story of this place and it's again it it lends that historical that arc if you like of change that the uk in general has gone through but you know in particular places like this yeah and i, I think that the the, the makeup of the, particularly of this selection but even you know, arguably i would say in terms of the, the overall portfolio that i've developed it's not fully yet representational of the community as you would find it if you, if you went there to visit for say a day or two um, so there's mm -hmm. some work in that area and that and largely again I think uh, with respect to say for example uh, South Asian heritage community in, 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 in those towns um, there's, there's sort of a little bit more work to be done in terms of access um, particularly if I wanted to represent some of the female population from that community mm -hmm. a little bit more work uh, so there's definitely something to do there uh, but I think it's, well, it's a point well, well uh, uh, spotted there yeah. Glenn I'm interested then, to hear oh sorry Ed, go ahead Oh, and then just these are th the last thing for now is rituals, celebrations, funerals, birthdays, weddings. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, just, just, just that's part of getting in below. That's part of getting below the surface, but it also, you know, it could be, it could also be like national events, you know, uh, whatever, uh, whatever, what is it, November 11th, the uh, not Veterans Day, what's it called? Um, v Day in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those sorts of things like 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 events on the national calendar that bring the community out, but then events on the personal level, birthdays, weddings, funerals, whatever, so forth and so on. Like, like, of course, that means you need to get a greater level of access into people's lives. But it feels to me that for this work to get to that next level where it is um, not just, you know, better, quote, whatever that means, but uh, stronger visually, but deeper, deeper in the meaning and how it reflects this place. And it's a place that you genuinely clearly care about and are interested in, then it just gives the work that much more gravitas, that much more depth and meaning. That's wonderful. Thanks. These, these are all really interesting. And also visually. And also visually, you know, it gives you a lot more to work with. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I think this, this is a great conversation. I'm just I'm fascinated by what, what you've seen in it. I'm, I'm interested in, Glenn, you've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of these projects on the Social doc doc Documentary Network. What, what's your thought about the conversation and what uh, anything new that, or that you've seen that we haven't discussed? Well, when I first saw this project on SDN, and I was looking at these images and saying, wow, this person really understands um, the visual language and particularly how it relates to photography. 
like i mean in some ways they could just be a snapshot like this picture it's just these two women on the road but immediately there's um a certain sophistication that comes across on all of these images that just elevates it so much beyond that and um we don't normally talk a lot about technology in these discussions, but John, I just want to ask you, these are not your typical 35 millimeter formats. So what format are you shooting in and what are, um, what are you shooting with? Yeah, I shoot with, um, I mean, I've, I've, I've taken photographs with all sorts of different formats over a number of years, including a large, a large format like field camera. <clears throat> I've taken portraits with those and that's had a, that had a really big impact. But, but surprisingly, perhaps I've been using mirrorless cameras for this, for this project and, uh, I go out with two or three different cameras with different lenses. I mostly only stick to a an, a, a fifty mil equivalent, thirty five mil, fifty mil equivalent. That's the main lens that I use. I feel very comfortable with that. So I've got to a point with the cameras that I use where you know the camera starts to disappear eventually, right? Because you, you're so used to using it, and um, the quality is so incredible from from these cameras compared to what mm -hmm. I remember I was using when I started taking photographs on a, an old Zenit. Zenit B camera with you know, 35 millimeter film. Uh, so they, they, they produce beautiful quality of color as well. And I think that's one of the advantages I think of using a modern digital camera, I think is that you, you get such wonderful, rich colors. They record the colors so accurately, uh, so vibrant as well. So yeah, so very small format cameras. It's uh, I use a, a mirrorless range finder camera and a couple of the smaller uh, mirrorless cameras. So it's very mobile uh, stuff that I use here. Yeah, and the reason but, but I, I Excuse me. I I, no, I wasn't ahead. sure if you were putting like a heavy camera on a tripod and doing it very um, studied like that, but but you're not. You're just using a handheld camera, and so that that just leads me to the next thing, which is really just following up on what Ed was saying that you know, the visual acuity is fantastic with these images, but emotionally, I, I feel you need to get deeper, particularly with the portraiture. Um, you know, I think it's the weak link in this work is um, how you're sitting with these subjects and you know translating that into the um, the visual imagery. That um, I think you need to think about how to approach the portraiture in a way that's as sophisticated as all all the other elements that you're bringing uh, to these images. Um, that it's not just as simple as taking all of your training and learning and um, visual and aesthetic acuity to these images, which you're doing, but then you need to do something else with the portraiture to elevate it to this next level. Yeah, that's really, really, really valuable feedback. Glenn. And, and I think you're right. I think sometimes they feel not necessarily, necessarily rushed because I always have that sort of thing in my mind. If I'm thinking of walking away from a particular situation that I've photographed, just, just take one more, you know, just, just think through and think, well, have you really got what you wanted? Uh, but that's obviously very a little bit of a challenge when you, you you're working with people because sometimes people are rushing around and you know they might be a little bit awkward to do it in the first place. So that's always a big challenge. But I think I I think that challenge I recognise in what you've said, and I think it's absolutely right. And I think it would make make the, the portraits uh, stronger. Ed, go ahead. Looks Thank like you. you, a, you look, it looks like you have a thought. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I, I'm an excited pupil. I, uh, um, You're the teacher. So, you know, it's in, <laughs> nah, nah. We're all teachers um, and pupils. Um, no, what 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 I'm looking at your pictures. You know, the portraits. What I'm I'm wondering, and I, this happens to me sometimes, is you get engaged talking to the people, and then you goddamn forget to like make pictures. <laughs> you know, like you're. This really happens to me when I, and I haven't done it a lot, but where I get to photograph famous people or let's say people who are like really, let's say who are like, I can't believe I've met this person. And I have to keep on reminding myself like, Ed, shut up and focus on the photography because I just want to ask a zillion questions. So it doesn't matter if a person's famous or just, you know, the grandma down the street. They're all legitimate in the stories they tell and how interesting and fascinating they may be. But what I'm sensing is that you're engaging with these folks and please correct me if I'm wrong. And, and, and you're getting so caught up in talking to them that you're not finding those. There's something about portraiture where you need to find this moment of stillness where like everything comes together, you know, from the technical foreground, middle ground, background, your lighting, where you've placed the person in the frame, all of those things, but also their expression, the emotion, 
in, within them, and whether it's serious, whether it's laughing, whatever it may be, whether it's looking dead in the camera or looking off, whatever it may be, that it's so important as the photographer, as the portraitist, that you you it's like these magical moments of stillness where everything comes together, you shut up, they've shut up, and it's like, just the image gets made. And I feel that that is lacking. Now, having said all that, you might think, that all sounds great, Ed, but that's not how I wanna work. And that is totally okay too. All I care about with folks is that you're intentional, you're in control of your process, and whatever results you're getting, that's what you wanted. That's that's all I care about. Not that yeah, you follow, you know, my approach or anyone else's approach. Yeah, it it doesn't. The process of making the portraits, um, like with uh, Leon here, this picture that's on the screen at the moment, th th these are not rushed moments. I think there's a, there's a genuine bit of feedback I think I'm getting from both of you that is about take a little bit more time and get a little bit closer, try to get better access, for example. And I think I completely agree with all of that. But the actual experience of making the photographs isn't rushed. I think that's one of the things that surprised me, given the, my experience of photography over the years, is with this project, I've really taken a great deal of time to sort of uh, try to frame things right, to, to make that moment quite still and quite calm, um, and to let people feel relaxed as, well, as much as they can be anywhere whilst, whilst having the picture made. Um, and you yeah. also have to think of the environment as well when I'm out there, because, you know, in this particular picture, for example, these are, you know, rows upon rows of terraced houses. It's almost quite claustrophobic. People are out on a gloomy day to walk the dog. It's cold. And, and you're stopping them and you're keeping them from, you know, doing what they want to do. And But I managed to sort of, I think within that, still to manage to find a way of making a photograph that's, that's genuine um, and that's got some charm about it as well, I think. But... I think oh, the, absolutely. The point about getting closer, I think, I think is absolutely the bit that's really chimed with me. I think because that's following the evolution of the project for me, which is I need better access. I need to get to, speak, to know people better and get the, get pictures that are, and portraits particularly that are a little bit closer, I think. And I just want to say, this is a great photo portrait. Oh, can we go? Also, yeah. I love the dog, too. <laughs> because <laughs> the dog is just like dead staring at you no this is this is a wonderful portrait and um two other things i wanted to say so one picking up on what glenn brought up earlier about format it looks like these pictures are almost square six seven they don't look 35 mil so is that is that just my eyes playing tricks on me but they don't no, look like 35 yeah, that's intentional in a sense because I knew that when I set out on the project that this would be a mixture of portraits and, and perhaps uh, details uh, and, and landscapes. And I wanted to make sure that when I was out shooting that I've got frames within uh, the viewfinder that give me just a slightly shortened or narrow uh, perspective or crop uh, because then I think the portraits that you make within that frame tend to sit a little bit more comfortably. So between a mm -hmm. and a 35 mil frame. So I purposely set out that way. And the, the advantage of these really modern cameras is you can set them up that, that way, right? You can you can sort of pretty much shoot in any format you want to. And I chose to do that at that, that sort of uh, that, uh, dimension, that ratio, because uh, I, I felt it would be better for, for on average, given the range of uh, photographs that I would make. Yeah. And then my, my last comment, if I may, or please do, do. I need to be quiet. Or no, go ahead. Which is, you know, I often, I often talk about um, in in how we create a visual narrative. You know, there's a language as we've alluded to already in this conversation. And part, like to me, there's sort of four basic building blocks of the visual language. You know, and that is the environmental portrait, the candid moment, the detail picture, and then the landscape or sense of place picture. And I can see in this, you know clearly you know small selection of what from a very large body of work that it embodies all of those things already and i don't know if you're conscious of those elements as you've been working but you know whether you are or you're not i i find that that's a really um wonderful kind of guide on 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 how to make how to how to create a, a visual narrative and a large body of work so that not so not, so that not all the pictures are exactly the same. Well, that is a uh, a great point to uh, to wrap things up with Ed. Uh, thank you so much. I want to say, John. Um, first of all, thank you for showing your work. Um, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for the photographers who come on and show a project that's still in the middle. It's uh, um, it takes a lot of courage. Um, 
and it's greatly appreciated. Um, I, I will say that if uh, there are folks out there watching who are interested in showing their work on the Crit House, you can do that through our website, thecrithouse.com. You can register to participate. Um, and in this circumstance, we have partnered with the folks at the Social Documentary Network to work with them to identify projects that have been on their website. And uh, if you're interested in documentary, social documentary network dot, is it dot net, Glenn? Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, um, social is, documentary dot net. Yeah. That is a, it's a great resource, not only for education, but for seeing other work and putting your work up there and getting feedback as well. So uh, Glenn, thanks for participating. Ed, Ed Cashy, um, really just an honor to have you on the program. It's a uh, uh, great work um, that I've, I've seen of yours in the past. And I know that uh, uh, there's a lot more to come as well. I am going to be linking out to a couple of videos here on that for you to look at. Uh, Ed has a, a fairly new book, it's out, Abandoned Moments, and we'll have a, a gallery talk on that book, and we also have a, uh, an SDN video, The View from COP21, What It Means to Visual Storytelling, and I want to thank you all again for participating on The Crit House, and all of you for viewing The Crit House as well. Have a great day.